This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, these are one of my favorites. It's where I get to answer a question from a viewer. And hopefully by not only helping them out, I'll help all of you out as well by either explaining something that you didn't understand or showing you a technique that you didn't know that you could do inside of Media Composer. Now, here's this week's letter. Hello Kevin, I hope you don't mind me writing to you here directly. I found your tutorials incredibly helpful in the past to get my head around Avid. And I hope you can once again help me with figuring something out. We recently had a technical issue at work leading to a full reinstall of our Avid machine and the loss of all presets, custom export settings, etc. Most of these were created by a prior editor who has since left the studio. I've been able to recreate most of the settings from memory except for one. Somehow they had a preset which was called Send to Squeeze, which with one click, they could send a timeline to squeeze, have it load up, and then auto apply a compression setting and squeeze the file. I've been able to send the QuickTime reference movie to squeeze and load it up in the app, but I can't figure out how to automatically apply the compression setting and start compression. I've been trying to find any information online for this, but so far I've been unable to find anything. Any help or pointers in the right direction from you would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, Laurent. Well, Laurent, in this lesson, I'm going to show you and everybody else how we can actually set up a send to command from Media Composer to send a timeline to squeeze have it open automatically, not only bring the file into Squeeze, but apply a specific compression preset and export it to the desktop for us. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that I'm doing this tutorial on my Windows machine because I've noticed the technique does not work quite as well on the Mac side. I'm not sure why it could be a Mac Windows thing, but this tutorial is going to be more focused to my Windows viewers. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And once in Media Composer, you'll see that I have a timeline set up and ready to go. Now, how we're accustomed to normally exporting files from Media Composer is by using an AMA file export or by simply coming up to the export command. But we're going to take things one step higher here. And what we want to do is to do a send to command. Now, you'll notice that we have a few send to commands already set up by default inside of Media Composer. But what we want to do is we want to make our own. Now, once we select the make new send to preset, we'll be brought to the send to make new preset window. And let's get this set up. Now, we are doing an actual export from Media Composer. Don't think that we aren't. So what we need to do is to set a destination for this file to go to. Now, for me, I'm just going to send it to the desktop. For you, obviously, you might have a specific location on your hard drives that you'd like to send all your exports to. I'd suggest sending them there. What we're going to do is say OK. And we need to give the file a name. Now, by default, it will always give the file the name of your sequence, which I'm perfectly fine leaving it as that for now. And what we want to do is we want to auto launch, not digit delivery, but Sorens and Squeeze. Now, you'll notice that you can add or remove items from this drop down as well. Now, Sorens and Squeeze is the option we want to go with. Now, as soon as I select Sorens and Squeeze, you'll notice that we now have a few more options. Now, what I'm going to do is while I talk about those options, I'm actually going to launch Squeeze in the background because I want to show you something that I've done inside of Squeeze that I think is exceptionally important for me to point out before we move on. Now, we're going to auto launch Sorens and Squeeze. And what we want to do with the file that we export is we want to auto load the exported files. Now, we don't need to reveal the exported files. That's perfectly fine, but we definitely want to auto load them. 
Now let's talk about what preset we're going to want to use from Squeeze. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do Alt and Tab over into Squeeze because I want to point out that I already have a preset set to go called, appropriately enough, Kevin's YouTube Preset 720p. Now don't think that we can use only one. We can really use any of the presets that come with Squeeze. I just wanted to name one something easy for us to find. I'm just going to close Squeeze again. Because I'm going to come to the options now. Once I call up the options window, this is where we can now start to get in and automate this whole process. What we want to do is not start the compression manually. I want to start it automatically. Now I'm going to leave the auto crop the interlace filter on because normally I have that on by default in every export that I do. Now here's where things get really nitty gritty. Now you'll notice that we have the format option. I'm just going to drop that down. We have MP3 audio selected. Now when I was in Squeeze, that preset that I had set up was an MPEG-4 file, but you'll notice if I pick any one of these, we'll just choose, you know, we'll choose MP3 audio because I happen to be on it. Here's all the presets that are built into Squeeze. So for example, if I came down to, uh, let's come down to WebM. You'll see that if I drop that down, we now have all the different export options for WebM. Now the one that I had set up, I'm just going to come back to MPEG-4, is if I scroll all the way down here, you'll see there's my Kevin's YouTube preset 720p and you'll also notice that that was in the WebM export as well. What we're going to do is select this preset and we can now choose what we want to do as far as the publishing options go. Now you'll see that we only have the option to output to file only which is perfectly fine because that is what I want to do. Now I'm going to say OK. Now something I should point out is those settings that I just set up are now all set to go. What gets people a little bit confused is if they click on options again, this window will actually reset itself. I'm just going to set everything back quickly here. Keep in mind that even though it reset itself back, it does remember those settings or those parameters we got in and adjusted when we started. So what I now need to do is to choose how I would like to export my timeline from Media Composer. And I have a same as source video only option here. If I wanted to get in and tweak that, I could always just click on options and get in and tweak it however I like. I'm just going to choose actually the use marks options here and we'll say save and we're going to now save this as a template. Now the question is where are we actually saving this as a template to? Well you'll see if I drop this down it's actually going to my C drive to users, public, public documents, avid media composer, avid templates, send to templates. Now for me maybe I want to have one, two, five, ten, fifteen different templates so let's create a folder called appropriately enough Kevin's templates. Okay. And in here, we're going to call this squeeze 720p preset. Okay. And I'm going to say save. Now, once we're all set to go, all I now need to do is to simply come down and say okay. I'm going to be prompted because this file is not originally a same as source export. What we're going to do is just do a same as source export to the desktop so it'll recompress it at DNX HD 115. And once it starts going, immediately Squeeze is going to open itself up. Now I want to make sure that I hide Media Composer so you can see exactly what happens here. We'll give Squeeze a second to finish loading up. And once it does, what it's going to do, much like we had asked it to, is it's automatically going to import this file, apply that preset, and start encoding it right away. You'll see there's Squeeze open. There's the file dropped in there. The preset's already on it and it's already encoding the file to the desktop. Now again, obviously the length of the time it takes to export your file from Squeeze will vary based on file sizes, file lengths, etc, etc. But this is a very cool technique if you use Sorensen Squeeze, which is an application that I use on a fairly regular basis. This is a very cool and quick way to automate all of your Squeeze work right from Media Composer. Now this is a two-pass Exports, we'll just give it another minute or two here to finish doing what it's doing. And once it's done, what we can do is just head to the desktop. And I'm going to open this with this, this little application called QuickTime Player. Just ignore the fact that I'm opening it with QuickTime. But you'll see that this file has now been streamed down. If I come to my movie inspector, you'll see that this is an H264 1280x720-2398 file that's now been taken down to about 9 megabytes. Let's take a look at its properties. Yep, just a little bit short of 9 megabytes. You'll see the original file size was the original over 100 megabytes. So this process is not only super quick and super simple, but will give you those small file sizes you need so you can take them, send them to a client, or upload them to an FTP literally 
in no time flat. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.